w one of the things that made a difference for me was the support that I had. So I had family, I had friends. I didn't see them all, but I talked to them. Um, I sent out updates regularly, letting family know what was happening with John. Um, so knowing that, you know, people couldn't be there with me, but they were thinking about us, they were, they were available for me to talk to, that made a difference, having that support. So I, you know, I think, and, and it was hard for me at first to lean on people because, you know, I'm not somebody who um, does that very easily. I'm usually the one taking care of everybody else. So to be able to lean on people and let them take care of me, um, that, that was important and I had to, it was something I had to, to really consciously allow myself to do. Yeah, I think if, if you've got someone in this situation, if you're in this situation, well, at least what helped me was, um, you know, frustrations aside, it's just kind of having trust and faith and, and knowing that, okay, they, they put them, you know, in a broom closet, for lack of a better term. But I don't ever think that means they, I don't know, it feels like they've forgotten about him, but I don't think we ever thought like, oh, they're letting him die because of this. Like, I, it, I you know, optically mm -hmm. it always looks bad when, again, you, you don't see anyone around or you feel like he's been shouted off the corner. But, you know, it's, you have to be empathetic and sympathetic with all the people who are in the situation as well. There are workers, yeah. there are people who have COVID through no fault of, I mean, no, no one's at fault yeah. necessarily for it. But, right, right. Um, so just having, having a little bit of, of faith and trust, I think, in, you know, the systems that are in place that are, that have to deal with it because what are the options? We weren't going to bring them home and take care of them ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we have to just be hopeful because it wasn't any use for us to go, oh, they're not taking care of them and they're, they're just letting them die. Like, oh, even if that were the case, what good is that for us? Yeah. And, to, and, yeah. and in fact, they explained to me that it was actually safer for him to be where he was because he wasn't near anybody else who had COVID. Um, and, you know, initially I was like, yeah, I don't know if I believe you. But then I, the more I thought about it, I thought, yeah, no, that, that does make sense. And, and the other thing too, in addition to the support that, that I had emotionally was being able to do what I could to take care of him. So when, when we ultimately did have to let him go, um, I felt like I had done everything that I could. And that was, you know, playing music for him, um, cutting his fingernails, massaging his feet, whatever, you know, just being there with him, talking to him. And the hospital recognized that. And, and that made me feel good that, you know, they saw how much I loved him and how much I, I cared and, and that I did whatever I could. And, you know, there were times when I, I, I wasn't sure whether I was doing the right thing by keeping him alive. Um, I didn't want to make that decision. I wanted, I wanted it to happen. You know, if, if it had to happen, I wanted it to happen without me saying, okay, it's time. Um, but, but I did, you know, an, a, eventually I, I felt like I had done everything that I could. And that, that, that helped a lot.